What up African world, it's Home Team here and welcome back to another video of African history, culture, and worldview. Today, we're going to be talking about the life of a little known African philosopher named Anton Wilhelm Amel. By supporting this channel on Patreon, you're helping in the creation of these videos and contributing to this content. On Patreon, you can find more in-depth courses on African history. And with word from my sponsors, there's a new Kickstarter campaign featuring the upcoming book titled Bedtime Tales of African Queens Who Slayed History. It's a children's book suitable for ages 6 and above centered around African queens. It features the stories and full-color illustrations of 31 African queens written in a mini-biography fairy tale format. This book is designed to educate the younger generation about Africa's glorious past. Amongst the queens featured are Queen Nzinga of Angola, Queen Moremi of Nigeria, and many others from all over the African continent. All the illustrations are handled solely by black artists around the world. Links to Patreon and the Kickstarter campaign in the description box below. Anton Wilhelm Amel was known as the African philosopher of the 18th century who gained some notoriety amongst German thinkers at the time. Ironically, while Anton was advancing, his own brother was unfortunately enslaved in Suriname. So the most pressing question is, how did Anton Amel end up in 18th century Germany to become a prominent philosopher? Born in Akonu in Ghana, Amo was presented as a gift to the Dukes August Wilhelm and Ludwig Rudolf von Wolfenbüttel by the Dutch West India Company in the year 1707. According to church records, on the 29th of July 1707, a young Moor was baptized in the chapel of the Southville Castle and named Anton Wilhelm Amo. He was named after Anton Ulrich von Wolfenbüttel and his first son Wilhelm August. The name Amo is Ghanaian. This suggests that Amo was at least a toddler and therefore knew his name when he arrived in Germany. During this time, it wasn't an uncommon practice to acquire enslaved Africans and host them amongst European royal families. Most were gifts to European nobility and seen as status symbols. The most popular perhaps being Abram Hannibal, an African captured by the Turks who later became an outstanding Russian military engineer nobleman and great-grandfather of Alexander Pushkin. Unfortunately, there are some gaps in trying to understand the life of Anton Wilhelm Amo, but there are some assumptions made based on the observable details. Little is known about the period of Amo's life extending from 1707, the year of his christening, to 1727, when he began his university studies. A few receipts bearing his signature are the only extant materials we have. However, Richard Berenches points out that the format of those receipts and the handwriting are undeniable indications that Amo was not a servant in the Wolfenbüttel court. In his studies, Amo was fascinated by the concept of individual happiness through the power of the state and was influenced by the philosophers around him, one of them being Christian Tomasius. According to Amo, Tomasius had given philosophy a new status and elevated it, allowing it to permeate other disciplines and be used in a practical way. Amo would participate in debates at the university and was faithful to the Enlightenment train of thought. If the Enlightenment promotes independent thinking, then Amo can be labeled as the true Enlightenment scholar. During these years of much heated debate at Halle, he produced a work which was not touched upon at Hala and which was directly related to his condition, namely the rights of an African in 18th century Europe. Oddly enough, out of all his works, this one has mysteriously gone missing, but his other works include The Apathy of the Human Mind. Amo has other works, but it would certainly have been nice to see his dissertation that perhaps spoke on an African perspective on 18th century Europe. After his time at Howe University, all his writings from then on contain, in addition to his signature, the words, The African from Ghana. It seems clear that Amo never forgot who he was or where he came from. He continued his journey contributing to the intellectual circles of Europe. 
In Wittenberg, his works focused on rhetoric, philology, and medicine. One of his significant contributions was related to the field of medicine, a treatise in which he examines the use of medication on the human body and defends the position that the human soul had little to do with the body in the treatment of illnesses and that medications could have a purely chemical effect. Countless documents describe Amel as leading university ceremonies, accepting awards, and having a degree conferred upon him. He seemed to have developed quite the reputation and was certainly respected as a scholar. Unfortunately, however, after 1740, members of his circle began showing less interest in his work, becoming more involved in the Astro-Prussian War. They began distancing themselves from the philosophy of the Enlightenment, a philosophy that Amo was very much still committed to. This eventually led to their abandonment of Amo himself. With the lack of support he was receiving, Amo returned back to Ghana in 1751 and began work as a goldsmith. Despite all the missing pieces of Amo's life, we know he died in Ghana and was able to find his family. In August of 2020, the German capital of Berlin decided to rename one of their streets in his honor. Well, I'm all out, guys. This was just a brief video on the little-known life of Anton Wilhelm Ammo. If you like these videos and want to contribute to its continued development, consider supporting the home team on Patreon.com. The link is in the description box below. Know thyself. Remember your ancestors. Peace. Hey, hey.